John, we're out here on a cold, wet, and windy day just north of uh, Woodward. And what you guys are doing out here, you have some burn plots uh, on this sandy soil. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, we're here on the Howland Fern Cooper Wildlife Management Area, and the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation has allowed us to put these research plots in and demonstration plots that are looking at the effects of fire, mainly on sand sagebrush in the, in the sandy plant community that we have here in northwestern Oklahoma. What kind of plants do you, I mean, you said, you said sage, sagebrush. Uh -huh. Why is this a unique, uh, I guess, challenge? Uh, one of it is, is again, looking at, uh, at woody plant encroachments, which again, sagebrush is a woody plant, and, and looking at what are the impacts of it. And again, a lot of producers, landowners, have those questions about what are we, what are we doing with our sagebrush? It, it's getting big, it gets stagnant, and historically, fire played a role. Even in this, you know, in this part of the state, as it did in other parts of the state, fire played a role on it. Yeah, let's talk about just the land management of having sagebrush. Now, sagebrush is something that uh, a lot of cattle won't eat once it gets so big, and uh, it, it's a something that landowners really have to fight back, I guess. Uh, it's. Again, it's a it's a woody plant, a woody shrub, and again, without fire, it grows, it gets larger, uh, it becomes stagnant, becomes more woody, uh, and so it creates a little more problems. If you keep fire in the system, uh, it becomes it's, it's a less of a problem. Uh, it gets it back to, to more suitable habitat, not only for for livestock, but also again for a lot of wildlife species. Right. Uh, does it continue to spread? Uh, no. It's just here. Yeah, it's just here. It, it's it, the, the sagebrush, it, you know, it's, it doesn't spread, it doesn't invade, you know, it, it, it occurs on certain soil types and that's, okay. that's where we have it. And again, it doesn't cover the entire northwestern part of the state, you know, and, as it goes down. But again, it's on certain soil types and, okay. that's, and that's where it belongs and that's and that where it stays, you know, it's not an invasive species. Uh, I think a lot of people see it as that because what happens is, they, they overutilize their land and graze down all the herbaceous plants around it, and then you get to see, all you see is sagebrush. Right, right. Yeah, so so if, we're, if we're looking at this plot here, this is actually a control plot. Yes, this plot right here is, in this area right here, is an area that is unburned. So we, we haven't burned it just so we can keep it as a reference point when we do bring people out here, and also when we're sampling our vegetation sampling, we can look at it. And again, as you can see, you got tall sagebrush, it's taller. There's quite a bit of it that you can see scattered out through this plot. Right. But then as we look at, at the other plots back behind it and those these three around it, those plots back there are actually some burn that get burned every two years. And if you'll notice, do you see the sagebrush sticking up out there? Right, no, you don't. And it's not that not that we've killed the sagebrush with the fire or we've killed it out with any kind of herbicide or anything like that. It's that the fire has top killed it. It's still there, but it's re-sprouting. We have we have changed the structure of the sagebrush. Yeah, and, and it's not visible out there. It's still there, but it's just not as visible as these older decadent plants here that haven't been burned. Right, and you see a lot more grasses and other types of plants. A lot more plants. herbaceous plants that are out there. And that's again, that's allowing that to come up. Sagebrush is being suppressed down just due to the fire. Now in these sandy soils, uh, one thing a lot of people are gonna worry about is erosion and wind erosion specifically. Right. Uh, that's, you know, it's a, it's a big concern that a lot of people have is erosion, but with burning, it shouldn't be a concern at all. Uh, we've done different things and looked at, and there's been a lot of different studies looked at, and there's soil movement is very minimal. And especially out here in this part of the state, you have these sandy type soils that are very mobile. And we, we've had, you know, areas that we've burned in December, you know, off times of the year where they've set with no no vegetation cover on them all winter long and you're not you don't see that soil movement and again going back to fire breaks putting in bare ground fire breaks you know we're not having any kind of big erosion problem or anything like that so it's just a, a small matter that that some people get, get concerned about but there shouldn't be any concern and john why don't we see soil move whenever we burn uh one of the main reasons is is again a lot of times you either when the fire goes across it typically doesn't burn everything up. So you have stems, crowns, plants, you even have some leaf litter or the plant litter still on the surface that helps hold it in place. Even if you have a, a severe case like a wildfire coming across during really dry conditions, you still have the crowns and you still have the roots of the plants that are holding things together. It's not like we went out and plowed the ground up right. and 
then it's going to blow because removed we've, told, we've totally removed all the structure within that soil from the right. plant. So those roots will hold it, then hold it the there. The roots and the crowns will hold it there. Yeah. And I guess the thing to remember is that before people were here, fire was a big part of the big management part of this, this land. Yeah, and again, yes, uh, fire, fire was historically occurred here and it probably occurred on a frequency of, of you know, there would be times it would burn annually for a couple of years, but then, you know, it wouldn't burn for a little while, but it probably on a on a two to four year frequency, this area burned. What, what would you have landowners, uh, producers take away from what you, your research that you're doing out here? Well, what we're, what we're wanting to do is, is again, show people that, you know, we can burn at different seasons of the year. We can also burning at different fire frequencies, which is the most important thing, how often you burn is one of the most important things, but to come, come in here and to look at these plots and to look at the effects of this and say, this will work for my management goals that I, want, I have on my property. You know, is it, is it wildlife or is it livestock? And look at certain ones of these and you can, you can manage it. Because again, you don't want to treat the whole landscape the same. Right. And not everybody has the same management goals and ideas. Right. Right. All right. Well, interesting stuff, and uh, hopefully this will be pretty useful for folks. Uh, we've been able to use it several times for several field tours and demonstrations. It's been very helpful. All right. Thanks, John. Appreciate right. it.